Armstrong, Don Armstrong, he will be teaching us how to locate bugs using SOAP. Hi, um, for everybody who doesn't know me, my name's Don Armstrong. Um, I am one of a couple uh, maintainers on debugs. Um, I'm actually currently right now the person who's primarily active developing it. Um, but that's not to say that I'm the only person behind the code. Um, there's quite a few people who've developed and spent a lot of work. And another person who um, deserves uh, a round of applause is uh, Blars Blarson. He's pretty much single-handedly responsible for keeping the BTS as free from spam as it is. Um, I don't know how many of you are aware of it, but on a daily basis, we get something on the order of four gigabytes of non-duplicate spam to the BTS. Um, it's probably something on the order of 10 to 40 messages get through of that, that's spam uh, every day. Um, and he basically deals with that, updating the rules and making that all work. Um, so if you happen to run into Blars, uh, buy him a beer or give him a hand, because uh, he does most of the uh, unforgiving work that people don't see. Okay, just before I start talking about SOAP, I should talk a little bit about the architecture of debugs just to give you guys an overview of what's going on so that things that I talk about that I assume you understand, well, you, I actually told you, even though you probably still don't understand them. Basically, mail comes in, um, we check out all the spam, we have a series of proc mail rules too, besides spam assassin, a custom thing called cross assassin, which avoids running spam assassin on mails which match, match this ID, which we know already have a spam assassin score. Um, so, I mean, if you're sending mail to us, and it gives a nice spam assassin score of 20. Well, we don't bother to run spam assassin over every single mail again. Uh, spammers love to send the exact same spam message with exactly the same message ID to 20,000 bugs in one shot. So uh, this helps us waste uh, process, avoid wasting processor time on that. Then mail gets handled by process all. It's basically a small Perl uh, script which shoves mail off to process and service. Service is what deals with control at and uh, uh, request at. Um, so if any time you use the control bot, that's what's talking to you. Um, process deals with everything else. So if you email submit at or bug number at or bug number dash whatever at, that's all process. All the stuff that those things do interacts with a, well, kind of a database. It's basically a series of files in db dash h. Um, that also, from that, we generate indices, which is used to make the queries fast. Obviously, if we were running straight through the entire BTS, um, you wouldn't see anything at all when you viewed a package report page. Uh, and then there's the CGI interfaces, the SOAP interfaces, um, anything else that works is built on top of that. And there's a, now a series of Perl modules that deal with just about everything. Um, that happens in there. So if you really wanted to and you had to parse db-h because um, something I did or wasn't good enough or the SOAP didn't do what you need, there's Perl modules now that can do all that for you. Okay, uh, let's get on to what we can do with SOAP. Um, there's a couple major things that you're allowed to do currently. And this is not to say that this is an exhaustive list that I'm never going to add anything. And in fact, if anybody here has stuff that they want me to search for or be able to find using SOAP that I don't currently do, please file wishlist bugs for it. Um, I'm always looking forward to making SOAP um, serve as many needs as I can possibly make it serve. Uh, basically because that reduces my headaches when I break um, the file back end or I change the CGI's like I just did. Because um, otherwise I, I have to try to support things in reverse. I had to do this for report bug in Sarge or Woody um, and I'd really rather not like to have to do that again. Um, so it, it, that would help me a lot and you a lot if you tell me, hey, I need you to do X with SOAP. So let me tell you what you can do. Um, first things, you can obviously search bugs. And this is primarily bug searching and bug selection. Everything that you can do um, through the basic part of selection in package report you can do using SOAP. It uses exactly the same methods which are exposed via SOAP that package report uses. Um, other things that you can do, you can pull the bug status information for every single bug. 
Um, this is exactly the sort of information that gets displayed when we do versioning, archival. Um, this is the underlying summary file that gets ripped out by bug status. You can use it to figure out whether version's buggy um, and do anything like that uh, that's more in detail than finding a bug number from a bug. You can also pull user tags. So if you've set user tags and you want to know what user tags are set using SOAP. Um, another new feature, you can also pull the newest bug. Uh, from the BTS. So if you give it a set of bugs, it'll say, oh, okay, these are the 10 newest bugs. Um, it's not quite guaranteed to give you unique bugs because, or bugs that actually exist, but um, it will give you uh, no more than that number of new bugs. Because sometimes we delete bugs if their uh, spam makes it through submit and stuff like that. Uh, actually, I don't think there's any spam through submit, but sometimes bugs disappear, so that would be why that wouldn't quite work. Um, the final thing that you can do is you can actually pull the entire set of bug logs and all the records. Um, so every bug is basically a inbox with really, really weird control fields in the middle so we don't have to do from processing. Uh, so you can make a SOAP call and pull all that information. So let's play with some of the other stuff. Uh, obviously, writing SOAP for everybody kind of sucks. Um, you don't really care about what the stupid interface is. You just want to get bug numbers back out. Um, so, so a while ago, I made a patch, and uh, Steven Zaccaroli uh, actually made it pal palatable for people um, to BTS, adding a new command called select. Um, and so now what you can do is you can run BTS select and select bugs from a package. So let's see kind of how that works here. Uh, let's see if I can get it. Let's find me a window that works. Here we go. We open some terminals. Okay, so we can just run BTS select and a package GDC 4.1, for example. So this will go out, query the BTS, and return us a nice list of bugs. Right. There's a whole set of select queries that you can use. You can man BTS and search for select, and these are all the keys that are there that you can use. Um, there's actually a couple more keys that aren't documented yet here, uh, the one that I'll show you in a bit. Um, but in general, this will document everything that you can use to do with select. The basic idea is if you list the same tag or the same key again, it ors different keys and. If you want to or over keys, make multiple select calls. Uh, it's kind of a no-brainer, but that's how it works. Um, eventually, if I could find some sane way to do it, I may do more complex Select statements? Uh, yeah. Can you, can you uh, adapt the phone uh, for the video and stuff? It's not readable uh, yeah, on the screen. What, what in the world do I have set as a font right now? I don't know. Is that better? Okay. So just for the BTS record, I'll just show you what I was doing. Uh, package GDC 4.1. And so that selects a list of bugs. Um, so that's just one example. So let's go back to what we were looking at before here. Uh, we can also use it to do more complicated things, like getting all the set of RC bugs. So we can do that, BTS select. And so this case, we want severity, serious, severity, grave, severity, uh, critical, etc. So this will give us a huge list that'll scroll on for a while of bugs. So those are all the release critical bugs. Now, those are not, that also includes all the release critical bugs that are fixed, that are done that might not be interesting. So if you want to do something more complex with that, I wrote another command called just recently that doesn't exist anywhere else, which I'll talk to you about in a bit. But let me get back to what I was talking about. Oh, another new feature that I just added is correspondent. If you were looking at the options bit that I just added on package report, which I'll hit briefly at the end of the talk, 
um, you notice that there's a new option that you probably hadn't heard about before called correspondent. Uh, this is any bug that you've mailed. So it rips out the addresses from every single header field that I knew about um, and adds it into an index and tries to build basically a database of bugs that you've ever mailed. So if you want to know uh, which bugs I've mailed in um, recently, we can go BTS select correspondent. Uh, this won't work on your version of BTS, by the way. Sorry. Uh, there's a patch for it already, but it won't work. Um, and this will select all the bugs, in theory anyway, which I've corresponded with uh, that aren't archived. If you wanted to get every single bug that I've emailed with that mail address, you could also go archive both. And that will give another set of bugs. Okay, I don't use that email address all the time, so that's why it's not the complete thing, but, but that'll give you an idea. Now, you might be wondering what that's useful for. Well, I'll show you some examples of why you really might care if you can't already think of them yourself. Okay, so BTS Select is a tool that's useful for everybody. You don't have to necessarily screw around with SOAP to use it, it's pretty neat. Um, another thing that I just added a patch for BTS is status. Um, it shows information on a single bug. Uh, I don't really sure if I like the file colon thing that I invented, but whatever, it was an idea. Um, so if you want to show information on a single bug, you can just run BTS status, and it'll give you all the information on that bug. Um, It'll probably change to being tab delineated, and I think it would be neat to make a table out of it if you gave it a bunch of bugs, but that's the idea. Um, so this is, again, the get uh, status SOAP call um, basically made into a neat script. So, for example, we can take oops, our little thingy here. Oops, well, so much for that. Oh, well, I don't spell well, so. But we can go back up here, and we can go BTS status file. Obviously, you could select from a file. I, I think that's kind of s figuring out how do you want to specify standard in is always kind of lame, but whatever. That sort of works. Um, and it selects all the information on those bugs. Let me put it into less so you can see what's really going on here. And it also separates them like that. It always leads with bug number. So you could figure out your information from that. OK, that's pretty easy. Um, and you can probably think of other fun things to do with the select information on your own. Um, I'll leave that to you. I mean, because it's now in a command line thing, it takes standard input, produces output. You can do all sorts of insane things with grep and cut and whatever else you need to do. OK, uh, let's do some more complex things with SOAP. Um, the classic thing to ask is, are C bugs in installed packages? Uh, this is obviously a thing that we already have an existing tool called RC alert or whatever it is uh, that does a better job than the script I'm going to show you. But my script is way shorter. Um, so let's, let's take a look at what that would look like. Uh, let me make this so, yeah. I'm going to actually, it's actually written in Perl, but whatever. You can figure that out. Uh, RC bugs and installed packages. I probably should make the font larger, but whatever. It's in my subversion repository, and I'll put links at it at the end for people who are watching on the video. Um, but anyway, the basic idea is first we get the set of installed packages. That's probably a better way. There's better ways of doing it than using aptitude, but whatever. It was what I thought about was I was sitting here uh, two hours before the talk. Um, then we instantiate a SOAP request. How you do this is language dependent. If you really want to know all the funny ways of doing this, uh, let me pull up the wiki. And you can follow along in the, well, I don't remember what the link is, but this has, uh, this page has examples. Hello. There it goes. The SOAP interface documentation has examples on how to do it for all sorts of different languages. 
So if, if Perl's not your thing, you can refer back to hit this after I'm done and switch to a language that you find sane. Um, but anyway, we then use our get bugs thing that we did before to select bugs of RC severity. Then on all the bugs, uh, I only pulled 100 out because it would take forever otherwise. We can get the status on all the bugs in one shot. Then loop over the status, pulling out every bug. And if a bug has a package that matches a package that's installed, uh, then print it to standard output. So we can run this. It'll take a little bit of time, but uh, Debian did conf8. So and this will run for a bit and thrash my disk and then figure out uh, a set of subset of 100 bugs that have RC bugs in it. So that's pretty easy. What about other stuff that we can do with SOAP? Well, what about bugs that need help in installed packages? Well, you can already see that that's going to be just another example of the same sort of thing. Instead, we just select tags. So let's see, RC bugs, oops. What did I call it? Bugs needing help? Yeah. So we just, again, do the same thing, but instead of selecting severity, we select tags called help and do the same thing. So that's, that's really simple. Yeah. Where's the version of this script that checks the version that the bug applies to and compares them to the version you have installed? Yeah, so that's a, a much more useful example that would have taken me slightly longer than the five minutes that it took me to type this. <laughs> But yeah, that, would, that is something that you can actually do with this. Um, it, it's slightly more involved, and I, I can provide an example towards the end of DevConf once I actually have time to stop doing really useful things. But yeah, this is an example of a sim really simple script. And w to do that more complex thing involving versioning, you'd actually iterate over the status bits here. Um, and instead, at this point, you would compare the bugs to the version that you actually had installed and check is buggy at this particular version and that would tell you. Um, but anyway, this is a, just another example. And so this will also pull all bugs tagged help in install packages. And because we're doing archiving too, you're not gonna see every single bug in, the, um, in all of the BTS. You only see relatively recent bugs. So it's not as useless as it would have been prior to last year when I enabled archiving. Uh, the last thing that I was looking at was bugs that I filed that need love. So, bugs filed which need love. So, in my mind, bugs which need loves are bugs that haven't been had a mail sent to them in over a year. They're getting lonely. So, somebody needs to send mail to them. And since I've sent mail to them, uh, I'm or oh, in this case, I've submitted them. So, I should probably ping the maintainer. Uh, probably in a lot of cases, actually, these are bugs which I've submitted against packages which I maintain myself, so may maybe not so useful. But, um, but anyway, this is sort of an idea of bugs that you could find that you've submitted yourself that you should maybe ping the maintainer. So all of the bugs now have a field in status called log modified. You've seen it on package report. It shows up, oh, this bug log hasn't been modified in such and such a time. Anytime the bug is modified, uh, a message goes to it, the log gets modified. That's that big inbox of everything that gets sent to the mail. Um, and so this will give me a set of bugs which need love because nobody's mailed them. And so again, you can see I'm selecting all the bugs which I've submitted. So the submitter is don at debian.org or don at donarmstrong.com. Then I only rip 100 of them. And then I go through all the statuses, check the log modified to see if the mod time is below needs love, which is a year ago, um, and then print the bug number. So check what that looks like. So yeah, those were the RC bugs and in installed packages. Only the first 100, there's way more installed than that, but uh, bugs, yeah. ah, bugs filed which need love. And so the SOAP currently is relatively f fast um, because it's using an index. There are some queries though that will make it really, really slow. Um, and that's something that uh, hopefully will put more machines um, 
or more CPUs on the um, CGI end so the SOAP becomes faster and also put databases behind it to make the, the queries a lot faster. But regardless, the API is going to remain the same. So queries that you write today will work tomorrow um, and forward. If you're going to write long-standing applications, though, please talk to me because there's more stuff involving versioning that I want you to do. But uh, this is sort of a really quick introduction to it. So, so I should be emailing all of these bugs. Um, they would be a good thing for me to do. Okay, so that's the end of the brief SOAP bit that I was going to talk about. The other stuff that I was going to mention is slightly more interesting, um, well, from my perspective. But hopefully that gives you an idea of some of the things you can do with SOAP. Um, you can play around with it on your own, play with BTS select, uh, play with BTS status when it shows up. Um, and you can use that to find bugs that you've neglected, that you've forgotten about, that maybe you should get back in touch with and uh, help them get closed so they're happy at living in archive instead of db-h. Um, another thing that is, uh, in this part I'm gonna switch more on to stuff that would be generally useful besides SOAP. So another thing that is extremely useful in the BTS are user tags. Uh, a new feature that I've just added called user values, which isn't completely implemented yet, but I'll talk about it briefly, and user categories. Um, user tags is basically the ability to assign arbitrary tags to bugs. How many people here have user tags assigned to bugs in their name? Okay, so a reasonable number of people have user tags. Um, there are some relatively popular tags that have been assigned to uh, multiple usernames, um, and these are them. I just did a select and ordered it by them. So these are the ones that have, so for example, Origin Ubuntu has 15 different users who are using that tag for whatever reason. Um, the same thing with waits for sponsor, there's seven users which are using that, etc. cetera. Um, overall, we have 373 unique usernames, which are using uh, 3,243 unique tags. Um, so you can imagine there's no way I would ever have added all those tags to the BTS. So this is really useful. Um, there are uh, 57,000 or 58,000 some odd uh, tags on bugs. Okay, so this is a feature that gets used a lot. So if you're not using it, you should. Um, you can assign, oh, I should have checked that, but you can assign uh, tags to bugs using the standard set the username first to control Otherwise, it defaults to wherever you sent the mail from, which probably isn't what you want. Um, set user tag. So for example, this is setting the archive user tag. You just imagine new lines where they belong. So new line after packages.debian.org and new line after archive. And setting the DAC tag. Um, this is an example of uh, user tags which I've actually set on the ftp.debian.org pack, pseudo package, uh, which enables it to do useful things. Um, just a, a side note here, there are a set of users which are by default included in package queries. So if you include a query that includes ftp.debian.org as a package, it'll automatically load the ftp.debian.org user tags and it'll automatically select them. That's why if you want or maintain a lot of packages, you want to use packages or usernames like this if you want your tags to show up by default. Yes? Oh, oh, yeah, this, uh, there's missing new lines. Uh, the question was, did I need an extra comma after ever, everyone? And yes, if I was using the BTS command line, it would have extra commas. Uh, I forgot to put the new lines in in the verbatim um, argument when I was typing this into LaTeX, so, and I didn't look at it beforehand, so that's why it's messed up. But yeah, just imagine new lines where they belong. Um, and that would enable you to set user tags. Uh, you don't need to do anything special beforehand. If the um, archive user tag hadn't existed before, this will create it for the ftp.debian.org at packages.debian.org uh, user. So, so that's pretty simple. Uh, another feature that I've, go I've got most of the stuff to do, it just doesn't display anywhere useful, is user values. And this is a, sort of an idea to had the ability to assign arbitrary key value combinations, uh, pairs to bugs. 
Uh, you're already familiar with these. This is what owner uh, forwarded and stuff like that already is. Um, that's an arbitrary key value tag. Okay, so you can set owner and it's set to this value. You can set forward and it's set to that value. Um, the main things it would be useful for is in sorting of bugs, um, also selects, also adding more um, URLs to different things. So an example here, I am setting the patch location to a specific URL, which is run off the side of the page, but just imagine that there is a URL there. And so on the bug report now, that'll show up uh, if you, you're using the packages one so that you could click on and go exactly to the message that contained the patch or exactly to download the patch instead of having to, okay, yeah, this thing is tagged patch. Let me find where it is and then where, which message has the patch. This would enable you to do that, for example. Um, another thing you could do is you could set a priority. Yeah. Anything. It's Perl, remember? <laughs> so <laughs> put random data in it. Um, so sorting by number would work in this uh, Yeah. Um, so I haven't really figured out exactly what I'm going to do as far as the sorting. I'll probably make it smart. So if it looks like everything is numbers, then it should do number sorting. If it looks like everything is a string or it looks like there's some strings, then it should do comp sorting by, by string. Um, but I, that part isn't written, but that's what I'm envisioning having it for. So an example here is you could assign a priority to a bug, uh, which would be your personal priority. So you could say, okay, this bug is really important for me to work on now. And so you would have a, a better workflow. So when you sit down at your bug list, you would know, okay, these are the bugs that I want to work on in this order. Um, you could also, uh, another thing that I thought about originally was the ability to assign time durations. So if you think this bug is going to take one minute, and you have one minute today, then okay, you can fix that bug in your one minute that you've got to spend. If you think a bug is going to take five hours, okay, well then you put in whatever 600 or something, or 300, or whatever you decided to use for your priority or your time allotment, and you can ignore those bugs because if you don't have five hours to spend looking at the bug, why even bother looking at the bug title or even the log to figure out what in the world this bug is about? Um, so that'll help out. I think. Uh, but it's still slightly incomplete. Uh, you can't quite set the values yet, and they don't display. Although all the stuff to store them is there. So uh, hopefully at the end of DebConf, this will be working, and I'll actually announce it on DDA. Another thing that's existed for a while, but again, people don't use uh, because it's not documented well, which I'd hoped to force myself to do in the context of making this talk, but I did other interesting things instead, um, is user categories. Uh, user categories is basically the ability to override the default way that the BTS splits up bugs. Currently, it splits up bugs by status, with like whether it's fixed or not, severity, uh, and just one other thing that I'm forgetting. But uh, yeah, tags. Um, so those are the three things that it separates it by. You can decide that, oh, well, that's insane. I don't like this split that it's got, and I want to split it by these values instead. So this is an example of a split that I set up uh, for ftp.debian.org. It hasn't been kept up as well as it should, but this is an example of things that you can do. Um, so this, for example, uh, ftp.debian.org does different things. There are times when it's get asked to remove packages. There are things that are only involving DAC, the internal archive software. There are things that only involve Brittany. Um, there are things that involve adding new sections to the archive or removing them or stuff like that. There are things that involve overriding the override file. Okay. Um, and there are things that are just generally related to the fact that the archive or a mirror is jacked up or something like that. So these are all separate tasks that ftp.debian.org has. Um, and different people sometimes are interested in different tasks. So by splitting them out this way, you can just check out the subtasks that you're looking at. This obviously isn't particularly useful if you've got five bugs. But if you're one of the packages who has thousands of bugs, then this suddenly becomes really useful. So you can assign, remember the tags that I was talking about before, archive, etc. You can, this tells it to split based on the uh, tag, 
archive, remove, override, Brittany, DAC, and section, and stick everything else into uncategorized. Then the user category normal is the default categorization, and this overrides what the default was. So now when you go to ftp.deming.org, first it splits by status. So that shoves all the fixed bugs at the end, which you don't want to see usually anyway, all the other bugs that are open at the top. Then it flips by the tasks, and then it flips by severity. So we can sort of get an idea of what that looks like if we hadn't seen it before. Uh, let's see. I don't know where I put that. Oh, well. We'll just pull it up. Uh, very slow. No, I'll keep that there. Um, so if we pull up the ftp.debian.org, you can see that it's sort of split out. The things that are on categories at the top, um, these are just the bits that haven't had the user tags assigned to them already. But you can see down towards the bottom, that these are all the things that are involved, involving the archive, et cetera. Yeah? Uh, where do you have to, to, to type uh, the, the text you gave as example to, to give that result? Oh, so everything that I've shown here, you would send to request at or control at. Um, and that would add it for the ftp.devin.org user. Yes. Actually, I copied it out of the email that I sent to set this, so. Okay, can you explain what's the, uh, if that's the correct syntax, uh, uh, does it care about white space? Does it really care about star versus plus sign? Yes. <laughs> yeah, this can is you for explain that a little bit, please? <laughs> okay, well, so I didn't write this, so I don't even understand it completely yet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> But the basic idea is the categories start out with stars. And how you split out each category gets the plus signs beneath it. Um, and then you can assign the different tags uh, inside the brackets. Um, I will, once I have a life, or don't have a life, or don't have less of a life, um, we'll document this slightly better. But the basic idea is to learn by example and <laughs> to see what, what we've got. But it, it's, it's something that I'm going to improve. Um, but again, the basic idea is you first have your status. So this is the normal thing. And so status is already predefined, a default categorization that already happens automatically. You're all familiar with it. This is the new one. And so the first thing at the top sets up this categorization. And it has a name. And the hidden thing tells it not to show up in the option selection, which is currently not showing anyway, but, but it generally wouldn't show if it was said hidden. Okay. Oops. This defines this categorization. And so the title is at the top. That's how it would be labeled in the summary. And how it's splitting on is on tag. You could split on pending. You could split on severity. You can split on couple other things that I can't think of right now, but those are the three main ones that people use. Then each of the individual plus bits here delineates a subcategory in the package page. So the first one is that it's archive related, and so this has the archive tag. So tag equals archive defines it. Uh, and these work in order. So the first thing it matches is where it ends up. Okay, so if you had it tagged archive and DAC, it's going to end up in archive, not in DAC. Okay, you can also, I believe, put commas in between them if you want them to match multiple tags. Um, same thing with removal requested, the tag equals remove, tag equals override, etc. And these are just, again, the titles of each of the individual sections. Okay, so on the keg. Does it care about white space? It cares about white space going this way, yes. Yeah, white space matters. And this white space, new line space here, matters too. So, yeah, yeah it is sensitive to white space. Can you, can I do that on? Uh, 
Oh, WMPP, yeah. Sure, you can do that in WMPP. Anybody who wanted to spend the time to categorize all of WMPP could, could do this to split it out into different sections. Uh, unfortunately, it cannot be easily automated currently. Is there any way that using user categories on WNPP would allow us to cause the view to be faster by having it have to access fewer bugs? Could we, like, say, hide all the bugs that had a certain tag in a certain view, and that way we could, because currently the Debian website has a devel slash WNPP where the bugs are, are listed out, and one of the reasons that's needed is because the BTS is so slow to load the WNPP list. Yeah, I will show you how to make the WNPP list show up faster uh, towards the end if I get the chance. Um, so, but yeah, that's, this is another thing that you could use to do that because you could just show a tag, a specific user tag that matched, uh, which would also make it faster. You wouldn't even necessarily even have to go to user categorization, but it would make the whole display nicer. Um, so that's user categories. Uh, another new feature that I just added, um, which isn't documented yet, but it works. I tested it anyway. It, it works as far as I tested it, let's say, um, is summary. summary. Uh, so the idea behind summary is the ability to, in stupidly long threads, to pick the paragraph in a particular message uh, that has to be the leading paragraph, but uh, pick a, a paragraph in a message that actually tells you what the stupid bug is about. Um, the title should be the shortest thing that you can manage that sort of conveys that, but sometimes it's not long enough. Um, so summary just nominates a message in the log and says, okay, you're now the summary of this bug. It puts it up near the top of the title. Um, and basically the way it works is you give it a bug number and the message number that you want to rip it out. Um, it tries to do the right thing with quoted text by ignoring the first paragraph if it looks like it's quoted, by ignoring the first paragraph if it looks like it's pseudo headers or tags. It's not infallible, um, so if, if it screws up, give me an example and I'll try to make it so it, it does the right thing even in those cases. If you're using the uh, GNU's quoting style with indenting, you're insane, uh, it won't work for that, so I'm sorry. But uh, everything else, it should do the right thing. Um, and you can see an example of that on that bug. Uh, not a particularly useful example, it was just the one that I was testing with. Um, so you can check that out. Uh, Okay, well, I've skipped something. Uh, another thing that I just added um, is the ability to mark bugs as affecting another package. Um, somebody had asked for the feature, and originally I thought, well, why would you want that? You just use blocks. Um, but the idea is actually, in retrospect, when I thought about it on the plane, makes much more sense. Um, a lot of times, we have bugs in core packages that affect 8 billion other packages. And it really sucks when you're a maintainer of the package where the bug doesn't actually exist, but where it manifests, uh, that users file bug after bug after bug after bug, which you reassign and merge into the actual bug. Um, and the way you would do that currently is you would just leave a bug there, mark it as blocking the other bug, and then you'd have to recognize that, okay, yeah, this other bug got fixed, and now let me mark my bug as closed. So with this, what you can do is you can nominate uh, a bug as affecting other packages. And by default, well, once I have it totally working, it will show up in the package selection list. There'll be an option to turn it off, of course, because most of us don't care uh, what it is. But end users are going to want to know um, that a particular bug is affecting another package. It, it, I don't know where the slide went, so. <laughs> I was trying to find the right slide, but it, doesn't, it appears to have escaped. Um, so, so th that's why the slides don't match. But uh, that's a new feature. Um, it'll be documented in the usual places on bugs.debian.org as well. Okay, uh, another thing that is the, yeah. Uh, about that feature, uh, maybe I imagine that, 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 that then uh, on the bug list of the affected uh, uh, package, uh, you see the original title of the bug. Uh, which often users will not recognize uh, as the effect that it has on the affected package. Yeah, uh, I mean, 
there's always the case where users are running into. Uh, but hopefully you would take and make the, the title of the affected bug so that blah blah is broken in blah causes something else that you know causes every package to break or something like that that would make the title more accurate. But yeah, I don't know of a good, part of the thing is there's, it's a really difficult problem to figure out the right balance between being able to grab the user by the ears and say, <laughs> yes, this is your bug, and uh, being able to be informative for the developer looking at the bug list and saying, oh yeah, that's the problem with that bug. Um, I will fix it now, or no, I will deal with it later. And that's a really difficult thing to balance. So I mean, any better thoughts on how may, maybe better to do that? Maybe the answer is making the summary for that bug um, show up in the first page. That's definitely possible. Um, so I'm being told that I have 10 minutes left, so I will start speeding up slightly. Um, so that would be something useful to think about. OK, another thing that uh, in Helsinki, BDL actually asked about uh, and is finally starting to become moderately possible to do. Um, it's still a little bit hacky, but hopefully towards the end I'll have it so that I actually have packages in Experimental which enable you to do this, um, is to run a local mirror of the BTS. So I don't know, not all of you are jet setters, but there are lots of times when you are in some place that doesn't have internet, but yeah, you've got your local VCS, and yeah, you've got everything else you need, but damn, I don't have a local copy of the BTS, so I have no clue what's wrong with my packages. Uh, so the idea is actually pretty simple. Since bugs are all available via rsync, um, and once I finish packaging the CGI scripts uh, and put them in experimental, we can rip all the bugs via rsync that we want based on whether we've mailed the bug, whether we've, um, we've submitted the bug, which we mailed it, whether it's a package we maintain even if we haven't bothered to respond yet, whether it's an RC bug, hopefully we're, we're interested in those bugs. So any of those things, and you can add a whole set of selectors for bugs. If for some reason you wanted them all, it's again still possible to rip the entire BTS. Uh, the db-h right now is only like eight gigabytes, so it'll fit on just about anything you've got. Um, but anyway, then you can rsync the bugs needed um, using include with the little script that I pounded out as I was sitting here in 10 minutes. Uh, we'll pull the indexes and the version files, which the BTS just needs to work. Um, you will install the debugs packages, which ideally will have a little script that does everything above so you don't have to think. And in this case, I had to configure Apache in bits, but I'll probably have it set up so that you can run a command and it'll run a little web server on 8080 on localhost or something like that. So you won't even have to piddle around with Apache and just say, okay, start, start lo little local BTS and show me pages. Um, so I can sort of give you an idea of what the script looks like, I think. Uh, so here's a script that does it. It probably needs to be slightly more, uh, made a little bit more robust. But anyway, go. it'll rip all the bugs. Yeah, that's not executable, but whatever. So we'll go out, pull all the bugs I've mailed, et cetera. We'll start our syncing. Um, this will take a while, so I'll ignore the fact that it's still going in the background. And then after configuring Apache, we can now look at bugs on this local machine. So this is a, a very minimal mirror that only has these bugs running a small set of the CGI scripts. And if you really wanted to do it right this second, you can. Uh, let's see. That's the Apache config that does it. <laughs> and it, it just running out of a... Uh, <laughs> the, the, the only key thing that matters is this config file, <laughs> which isn't very big, and the, uh, the fact that I have a local copy of the BZR repository of debugs. But eventually, you'll just install uh, the package. Hopefully, by Friday, I will, in assuming I announce something to devil announce, you'll be able to, like, I don't know what command, but debugs local mirror the start the CGI and it'll just work. So you won't have to, to do all this insane stuff. Okay. I'm 
<laughs> Thanks. Um, some more stuff, just to go r run through this as fast as I can. There is a boff, and anything that I don't talk about, I will come back and piddle about later. Um, the first one is modularization. This you guys won't see, but it makes my life slightly better. It reduces the number of times I break the BTS and the no length of time that, that I break the BTS and the number of times that I break the BTS immediately before going to bed or disappearing from the face of the planet. Um, so basically now everything, or most things are modules, they well, relatively sane as far as Perl goes for modules, um, and so that helps. Um, this versioning aware archival, most of you already know about that. That was last year that I did it. Um, the other thing that's there is the new package report select options, which well, I just talked about with the oring and anding, so you can make really complex uh, select strings. Uh, the other thing that's really major is template support. Um, in theory, which, since I only speak English, it hasn't happened, but in theory, you can set the locale via some means that I haven't decided how you're supposed to do yet, and you could localize most of the BTS as it is now. Luckily, everything is in templates, though, so this means that you can also make changes more easily without dredging through the source code and figuring out where it is. Yeah? Not just localizing by means of the language accept header or uh, it, HTTP? Yeah, the question was whether I just use language headers. And yeah, that would be the right way for the CGI stuff. Uh, the, the other half of the question was the templates are also used for all the email. And that was the other part that I have no clue how to do properly. So, But yeah, it's something that's worth thinking about. And hopefully, uh, once it's, the templates are slightly more uh, content in one place, code in another place, um, it'll be something that I can give to translators and ask, please make these OK. Um, summary I talked about, effects I talked about, and correspondent was the other cool thing. Um, all of these bits work in the normal package report that you're used to. Um, so future stuff, more SOAP methods. Um, control is currently being abstracted out. Every time I look at it, I have pulled out more and more bits. Uh, why this matters to you is it will enable you to do all of the control methods in messages to process or to process all. So anything that you would send to nn at bugs.diamond.org or submit at will enable you to set any control option. This also enables me to rip out code out of process, which does things like setting the package and makes it do exactly the same thing, no matter whether you're using control or um, or setting it in, it in the initial submit message. Um, it also has the possible side effect of allowing a web front end, but I don't think I'm going to allow that. Yeah. You can just ask a question, I'll repeat it. Uh, do you plan to do other control uh, messages with, with SOAP? Uh, the question is, do I plan to allow control messages with SOAP? And most likely not. And the reason is because of the whole authentication issue. Um, I, it, it, it could be that if enough people decide that it's worth it to allow it with messages and authentication, that I will do it. The only thing is it almost assuredly will not be instantaneous. So there will be some sort of delay while you sit in a queue waiting for process all to wake up and decide that it wants to process things. Because currently, the, it's a very lock intensive process when it decides to modify messages. And long competitions is a little bit annoying. Yeah, and the things behind you. And I think that mm, one of the things I'm mostly missing from the BTS is uh, um, a co-maintainer view because a lot of our infrastructure has been migrated to have a, a point of view of commentating. While right. right now, if I'm a member of 10 teams, I need to look at 10 different pages. And I, there are a couple of bug reports. I think there was something missing on the duck side, maybe. Yeah, yeah. the main thing right now that's missing for me enabling that is uploaders, an uploaders file um, from DAC. And that's something that the FTP master team um, knows about and is working about uh, making available very, very hard. So. I assume that once that's ready, then I have to look at it and procrastinate for another couple of years, and then, then it, maybe it'll happen. <laughs> um, another thing that I'd like is some more integration with Mole and stuff, so you can put per package stuff and uh, better statistics and documentation. Um, this is how you can help. Okay, the source is all available. 
Uh, my source is even available on bzr.armstrong.com if you want to know what I've been working on that isn't yet committed. Although right now my tree is pretty much in sync with the main line. Um, but if, as I do crazy stuff, it gets more and more divergent until I drop a thousand line patches onto the BTS. Um, that explains all that. Uh, these are the other people who have been involved with dead bugs besides me. Um, me, Bars, Adam, Joseph, Anthony, Colin, and maybe you. So uh, thank you for your attention. Um, there will be a boff after. So if you've got questions that I haven't answered, because I'm out of time, um, and I'd also like to talk about the new package report bits so you guys can see how that works, um, please come at whatever, 7, I think it is, or something, 7 or 8, um, today. And we'll talk about that and uh, have a discussion a roundtable about it too. Right? Thank you for your attention.